Hello and welcome to our Live from Paris uh, programme. I'm Rochelle Ferguson, Biahi. These are the top stories. Hailing an important victory, Ukraine's President Zelensky says military special units have entered Kherson with troops almost in full control of the southern city. Meanwhile, Russia says it's withdrawn thousands of its soldiers. A rescue ship carrying 230 migrants docks at the French port of Toulon, this amid a bitter row between France and Italy. Paris, meanwhile, has warned of severe consequences for bilateral relations. Also coming up for you in the programme, the very life of the planet is at stake in the climate crisis. The words of the US President Joe Biden at the COP27 conference this Friday. Well, this is he stresses that the US is firmly on track to slash carbon emissions. Our top story this hour, Ukraine's President Zelensky says that military special units have entered Kherson with troops almost in full control of the southern city. Now, earlier, crowds waving Ukrainian flags greeted troops as they arrived in the city centre, hailing an important victory. Well, meanwhile, Russia has confirmed the withdrawal of thousands of its troops uh, from the city. Right, Moscow, right, though, right, right. Uh, denying that that move signals humiliation for President Vladimir Putin's war in uh, Ukraine. Let's talk more about this. I have our chief foreign editor with us, uh, Rob Parsons. I mean, Rob, you saw images there of uh, this celebration, if you will, in the city of Kherson. Uh, does that raise hopes for Ukraine in terms of maybe getting back some of the annexed uh, land within the country? Oh, for sure. You know, the, the, the Ukrainians are on a high now. It's been one victory after another. Uh, they're still making progress, incidentally, in, in, the, in the north of Donbass as well, uh, in, in uh, Luhansk region. Uh, pushing towards Svatove and hoping to turn the flanks of the Russians there. So if they were to do that on top of this, there's no doubt that the Ukrainians going into the winter would be feeling extremely confident indeed. That said, you know, it's not going to be an easy uh, operation them, for them to move from where they are at the moment, having taken Kherson, very difficult. Uh, it took a, a lot of courage, a, a lot of men, uh, and a lot of patience as well. Uh, the strategy employed by the Ukrainian military uh, w was re really smart, I would say. They, 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 they attempted bit by bit to degrade the Russian forces in the south and succeeded in doing it to the point where uh, the Russian commanding officers decided that it was absolutely senseless for them, for them to stay on in that part of Kherson region. Going beyond there, though, crossing the, the, the Dnipro River into the rest of Kherson region and progressing perhaps to, towards Crimea in, in the south is going to be even more difficult. Uh, so, you know, we'll see what happens, I, I guess, after the winter. If the Ukrainians make some substantial progress in, in Donbass and feel sufficiently encouraged to push things forward if the Russians start to implode. And who knows what's going to happen now, uh, because the, the Russians are seriously embarrassed, humiliated by, by what's happened. The political consequences could be huge. I mean, you touched there on uh, Russian commanded officers making this decision to withdraw thousands. It has to be said, a large number of troops from Kherson. The, the response from the Kremlin, though, has been, uh, you know, uh, this isn't humiliation for us. This is merely part of our strategy. Yeah. What do you make of that? I mean, well, it's a, it's, it's, a ra it's a rather pitiful attempt to pull the wool over people's eyes, to put a spin on things, to make it more acceptable. I think he, Russians are, are smart enough to see what's really going on and that, you know, it's a very big force they have in U Ukraine at the moment, and they're on the phone to their relatives all the time. They're telling them exactly what's happening on the ground. Uh, nobody's going to be fooled, I think, in Russia about what precisely happened. This was a major military defeat. Uh, it's certainly the case, you know, as you say, that the Russians are putting a spin on it. There are certain television stations, for instance, where they're talking about a maneuver, that it was ju just that, that they were just trying to reposition their forces, perhaps to redeploy them elsewhere along the front line. Uh, and it was just a clever thing to do. You know, I don't think anybody is buying that. And it's interesting that uh, on the hard right in Russia, up until now, loyalists to President Putin, the mood is changing very significantly. They are very angry at what they've seen. Uh, Vladimir Solovyov, the 
the chief propagandist of Vladimir Putin, was enraged on Russian television, saying there are too many scumbags who have been lying. Tell us the truth now. Uh, Sergei Markov, an, another loyalist um, political commentator, uh, has been talking about the biggest catastrophe since the breakup of the Soviet Union and that there will be serious political consequences. So people are seeing what's happening. This is, for, this is from state television we're hearing this as well. So, you know, the, the mood is very fragile in Russia at the moment and it's difficult to predict exactly how it's going to go. There are many who are starting to predict political consequences. What precisely that will mean, who knows? But there's no doubt that what's going on in the elite uh, will have really serious consequences down the line for the, way, the direction Russia moves in. It could have serious consequences for Vladimir Putin himself if he loses the, the faith, the trust of the political elite in, in Russia. That could very quickly lead to an ouster for him. But we're not there yet by any means. All right, Rob, thank you. From that mood, uh, fragile mood that you're describing mm. in, in Russia, let's take you uh, live to uh, Ukraine, where France 24's Luke Schrego is standing by in Kobleva. Uh, Luke, we've been speaking about Kherson. We've uh, seen images this evening of, of scenes of, uh, you know, triumph, if you will, uh, Ukrainians out in the city centre celebrating the arrival of Ukrainian troops. I mean, walk us through the latest that we know uh, in terms of what's going on on the ground this evening. Well, in general terms, it's been the biggest development of the war in months. Uh, the taking, uh, the retaking, in fact, of Kherson by Ukrainian forces from Russia. This uh, comes just uh, days after the Russia said it was going to withdraw from the only provincial uh, regional capital that it had taken. Uh, it's uh, We've seen the President Volodymyr Zelensky on Friday night saying that it's a historic day uh, and confirming that Ukrainian special forces were within city limits and inside the city of Kherson. Now, Russia, of course, is playing this as a tactical withdrawal. It's saying that it's completed its withdrawal now, that it was planned, and that it hasn't lost any troops or equipment, withdrawing 30,000 of those troops uh, east across the Dnipro River. Now, this is uh, in comp uh, comparison to what we've seen. The fog of war does still lie quite thick over the area, but we have seen Ukrainian reports suggesting that Russians have been not just uh, abandoning their uniforms, but their weapons as well, and uh, apparently told to make their way back to Russian territory however they could. Ukraine has uh, addressed those Russian soldiers. They've been saying, the only chance you have now is to surrender. They will take those surrenders. They have been very clear about giving them instructions and what, uh, on what to do and how to surrender in terms of individual units or indeed as part of, as part of uh, cohesive units. Now, the situation really has been untenable for Russia at this point. Uh, you've seen that Ukraine has used its uh, longer ranged artillery weapons like uh, the, uh, the HIMARS uh, system that it's been given uh, by the West to devastating effect to attack Russian supply lines. Now that was uh, leaving Russia, as I said, in an untenable situation. It could not keep taking these losses. It just couldn't keep supplying its forces. Now uh, it means that Moscow refusing to kind of deal with this, these sorts of losses has been pulling its troops back and been trying to dig them in on the other side of the Dnipro River, at least in terms of tra uh, trading space for time, uh, potentially with the idea of uh, halting any further Ukrainian advance. Uh, we've seen uh, the Antonivsky Bridge across the Dnipro uh, took uh, some major uh, damage this morning. We've seen uh, serious uh, damage to the bridge with several of its spans collapsing. That uh, means it's going to be a lot harder for Ukraine to try and ride the momentum forward and, and chase after these, uh, after these uh, retreating Russian units. Now, in the meantime, uh, back in the city itself, you've seen jubilant residents um, welcoming uh, uh, welcoming uh, incoming Ukrainian forces with open arms and absolute joy. This is uh, after they've, they've been submitted to months and months of Russian occupation. I mean, Luke, as you say, uh, you know, this is a, a key um, aspect of the momentum that, that's, uh, you know, underway for Ukrainian troops, a, a big uh, win, if you will. Where does this leave them going forward uh, now? Well, there is still a great deal of work for Ukraine to do. Now, certainly in terms of taking this, uh, the city of Kherson, it leaves them a springboard for further operations towards the south. Now, they definitely have one eye on Crimea. They've been saying that they want to take uh, that area back. It's been in Russian hands since it was uh, annexed in 2014. But it's not going to be so easy. One Ukrainian official on Friday has been uh, 
uh, evoking this idea of a city of death. Now that refers to massive amounts of landmines that the Russians would have left in their wake and, uh, and booby traps as well. Uh, and it's going to be a long and laborious task to try and rid the area and the city itself of all these uh, these deadly devices to try and make the zone safe. Now, uh, we have seen uh, reports as well coming through on Friday that forces moving into uh, areas uh, le left behind by the Russians have been killed or indeed wounded. Now, uh, even as Russia moves closer towards uh, territory that uh, Russia still controls, it brings uh, Russia uh, itself into positions that it's already already prepared in terms of uh, potentially being able to respond. There were fears that Ukrainian forces could have been moving into a trap, depending on what the Russian the Russians might have done. Uh, certain um, sources have been saying that they feared that they might say the city could have taken a massive artillery bombardment, and the fears are still there that that could in fact still take place with uh, Russians firing from the East Bank. Now, we've seen them evacuating civilians uh, ahead of this, uh, this pullout, and it does leave Russia's options open in terms of any further escalation in the area. Now, we've already seen missile strikes heading uh, towards the nearby Nip uh, Mikolaev, uh, around about uh, 100 kilometers uh, to the northwest of uh, Kherson. Uh, seven people died in one such strike this morning, and it seems that Moscow is in fact determined to make Ukraine pay for any uh, any and every inch of territory that it, uh, that it continues to take. All right, Luke, Luke Trego on the ground for us uh, in Ukraine. Thank you.